Greetings and welcome to the Open Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland and I'm your host. On our podcast today, I'll be reading my original report on my team's investigation of a dam, that's a deep underground military base, on the Queensland and New South Wales border near Wollongara and Jennings. If you go to our website at www.tomspod.com, you will find a blog post containing photographs taken on the day of the investigation to accompany this podcast. Now, grab a coffee, sit back, relax, and enjoy one of our original OEC magazine investigations. And again, for those not in the know, a DUM, D-U-M-B, is short for Deep Underground, sometimes Underwater, Military Base. And it's said that Australia has two major DUMs, one at Pine Gap and the other at the foot of the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. There are a number of smaller DUMs dotted around our various states, disguised as ordinary military and or government installations, Also, we've been informed by ex-military personnel. The Jennings Army Base, three hours drive from Brisbane and adjacent to Wollongarra, being one regularly discussed in online forums. Due to the continued banter and the words of a source that has been inside this base's underground facilities, a small group of us decided to go and check out sleepy Wollongarra. Heading off early, our first stopover was at a well-known UFO hotspot on the way to Wollongarra, that is, the Mogara Dam. A friendly chat with the local cafe owner confirmed strange craft sightings in and around the popular water source, but no military presence. After some excellent intel, scones, jam and cream, we got back on the road. Arriving in Warwick an hour later, we pulled into one of the landmark pubs in the area, the Sandy Creek. You would have thought we were the ETs by the looks we received from locals as we entered the pub and claimed some seats at the bar, nearest the door. After we ordered and inquired about the pub's heritage, we seemed to be making progress. In fact, I swear I saw a chink of light forcing its way through the native's tough facade. All hope died quickly when I subtly, or so I thought, brought the conversation around to local ET and UFO sightings. The silence was deafening. It was at this point that um, one of my associates donned his dark glasses and hat and told us to drink up and we were back on the road in less than five minutes. It was a pity really, because it was quite obvious that they had stories to tell, but just weren't comfortable sharing it with strangers. At Stanford, and only 30 minutes from our goal, we decided to visit a local winery to have a bite to eat and plan our afternoon activities in Wollongarra. We had a map. After a 20 minute detour, due to the GPS's in both cars going uh, mental on us. Not sure what exactly that was, ET or maybe a device nearby. We eventually pulled up outside the much touted Robert Shannon Winery. Sadly to discover that its fabled culinary kitchen was closed, um, which surprised us for a Saturday. Fortunately, the cellar door was open and we spent the next hour or so listening to the establishment's owner telling tall tales of strange phenomenon in the area. We ended up pooling our food and wine tasters and had a makeshift picnic in the backyard overlooking Stanforp and some amazing giant rocks that I think Stephen and Evan Strong would love to inspect. Finally arriving at Wollongarra around 1 p.m., We spent the first half hour or so driving around the small township, 
getting our bearings and taking particular note of any buildings or structures that we would be visiting in the next few hours. The area that we were told held the dumb proved difficult to access, as you would expect, as a number of occupied houses now faced out from the site. Only a small stretch of dirt road fenced on one side was visible. Large fields containing cattle could be seen where the supposed dumb resides. A number of time-worn and dilapidated army demountable structures were situated nearby, the only proof or link to the dumb's earlier or perhaps current existence. As our information was not precise, we decided to visit the Wallangarra Railway Museum on Rockwell Street to hopefully gather more intel on the military's various locations within not only Wollongarra in Queensland, but also Jennings in New South Wales. The Railway Museum was a good decision. We found an exhibit that highlighted the exact location of the Army Dump, aka Dump, as well as the entrances to two other military locations. And we also had the most amazing rumbles at the same time, thanks to the Railway Museum's Cafe. I think it's important to note here that when I returned to the Railway Museum two years later, the map that we found in this investigation and on this road trip um, was no longer present. And when I inquired about it, they told me basically that it had never been in that museum even though I have footage of it and you also now have a photo of it in the blog post which I mentioned earlier. The museum also strangely had its own TARDIS. Yep, a Doctor Who TARDIS, large as life. I captured a photo of it as well and you'll find that on the blog post. Do you think it was strange that it had a TARDIS in the middle of an outback town museum? I did. With a better idea of the location of the army base and a quick trip in the TARDIS, <laughs> just joking, we made our way over the border into Jennings, New South Wales and tracked down the original 1940s storage location next to the local golf club. Access to this area was shielded by a large white gate 50 metres or so from the entry to an army base of sorts. In fact, we believe it was the rear entrance to the Jennings Army Base. Try finding this base via Google or the Australian Army website. You get zero, zip, nada, nothing. Feeling brave, we drove into the base's car park and took a closer look at the original buildings, the base itself and suspected dumb location. It wasn't long before a security officer tapped on my window and asked us what we were doing. I asked for directions back to Stanford and we left the base a little disappointed having found a suspected entrance to the dumb but without any chance of investigating it further short of breaking in, that is. We then headed to the other side of Jennings, uh, closer to Beehive Dam, if you're looking at a map, where we found a second, perhaps the, the true back entrance, to the army base. Again, we drove in, mostly to do a U-turn, and found ourselves almost immediately spotted by two security officers. Only one approached the car. Again, the security officer, by script, seemed to ask us the same question, so I again requested directions back to Stanford. This area seemed to be a lot more secure than the other side, so we decided to drive around its perimeter, which fortunately was on the way to Beehive Dam, another UFO hotspot, uh, by the way. A staggering number of warehouses lined the, the base's fences. Most looked new and completely empty. Really, they were just shells. Apart from a few steel crates, a couple of cows and a few boxes scattered here and there, there didn't seem to be any other materials or people around. 
Considering it was the Saturday before Christmas, I would imagine a lot of the base would be on leave anyway. However, apart from the free security officers, we didn't see another military soul, not on the base or in the township. Our team of investigators then headed back to Wallangara and spent the rest of the afternoon in the local watering hole, getting to know the locals. I positioned myself at the bar and struck up an illuminating conversation with the barmaid and, and actually the owner. After some stilted conversation, she warmed up and then shared an interesting story about the old town electrician who had passed on recently and his descriptions of the underground base on his many maintenance trips below, below ground. She described US tanks stacked on top of one another on either side of an unwalled lift that ferries people from the ground to below. She mentioned that this particular lift resided in one of uh, the empty warehouses, perhaps the ones that we had driven by, on the base. I asked if any of the base personnel came into town and she said not often. They kept to themselves, um, either staying on base or travelling directly into what they would deem civilization to Woomba or, or Brisbane, I imagine. It was at this time that we were joined at the bar by an older man. The owner's demeanour changed completely and after serving him she seemed to disappear into the ether or the kitchen in this, this situation and a younger man replaced her at the bar serving the other customers. The older man didn't engage me in conversation. What he did do was stare at me until it became uncomfortable. Fortunately, one of my team who had been watching from nearby um, got up and sat between us, breaking his stare and um, giving me a level of comfort back. It's important to remember if you're going to do investigations of this nature, you need to go as part of a team, never alone. If a return visit is planned for Wallangara in the future, I would suggest taking a four-wheel drive and hiking boots as a visit to Bihai Dam would be a must. This dam has been the venue of a number of UFO sightings in the past and due to its close proximity to the, the Jennings Army base would definitely warrant a night watch. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com. That's www.tomspod.com.